Welcome to Around the Reel with your host, Aaron Carlson, Charles Lawson, and Steve Eaton. Boy, ain't no way, man. We are live. Yeah. Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. Good morning, evening, evening. or afternoon. Good Indeed. to see you guys. Here we are on the number one podcast in the Pacific Northwest around the real. The, these may be old numbers I'm still quoting, but <laughs> at one time at we were. At one point or another. Yes. At one time we were. And we're going to get back there. Damn it. I don't fuck around. You know what I mean? You got to push it. So how are you guys? What's going on today? Oh, just working, clicking along, hanging yeah. out with you guys. No, it's the morning. That's fine. That's fine. You're clicking along. What are you, a fucking beetle? What are, you, yeah, I'm making, I meant literally. I have a, I have a mouse and it clicks. <laughs> like, I do a lot of work. <laughs> no, you are doing a lot of work. You've got a lot of side stuff you're still working on, aren't you? I know. Yeah, I need no. to finish it. No, like, then. I miss there. you guys. Oh, we're right face. here, motherfucker. I was going to say, we I see know. each other once a like week. We talk day. all the time on our text threads. It's like, yeah. you know, it's all right. Yeah, I don't miss you. Yeah, we had a good conversation yesterday. We were talking about the Horrorverse a little bit, the new script mm-hmm. we're trying to figure out, and, you know, other shit. So it's good. It's good. Yeah. Nightmares. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah I know. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm excited. I'm excited for everything that we got going on. And tell your face. Stuff. What? Oh, I was You're thinking like, I'm about excited. It. I'm excited about everything that's going on. <laughs> Tell your face. I'm Don't, Chuck, do not mansplain yeah. Aaron. <laughs> you know what I'm him. saying? He can't help it. That's <laughs> what he does. If he wants to look miserable, he is allowed. <laughs> that's very true. You can wallow in your own misery as much as you want. But I'm and, happy. I mean, we were we did a bunch of stuff this morning. Aaron and I sat down and we went through uh, Blackout. We're trying to get all the rest of the episodes recorded. Mm-hmm. So I'm down to, uh, for my parts of it, I'm down to the last two parts, major parts, two major scenes to finish up in the film that we yep. have to uh, figure out how to take visuals into audio and yeah, create yeah. something wonderful for people. I still love how he said film and it's an audio series. But see, I say I, it all I, the time, I, too. I'm, try, I'm, I'm it's, trying. It's it was originally written for film. It was. Nobody it was. has used film in 10 years. <laughs> 20 at well, Now you're just, now, okay, now Steve's just being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> But I say that all the time. It's like, well, did you get it on film? I do, too. Yeah, that's No, I got a phone. <laughs> all right. Well, we got a guest fucking, today. Fucking we humans. Bring, yeah, we, should, we, we got a great guest. We're going to sit down and uh, maybe talk a little bit about what he does and what he's got going on and find out why the fuck he's making movies. So, Chuck, would you like would to like. do the introduction there? Well, I would like it very good. I would very much like to take this time in this moment to be able to uh, introduce you all to this filmmaker, a local artist um, to our own home of the Pacific Northwest, uh, TJ Him. I hope I didn't butcher your name too much. Yeah, he ran with it. Hey, it went good. Good to have you, TJ. Thanks for being here, buddy. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome, man. Awesome. He thinks he's he's still trying to feel us out a little bit. Yeah, he's got you. Well, everybody <laughs> does, right? You know, this is our uh, it's our time to do the same with him. So, and in fact, like I said earlier, you know, before we started the show, I did touch myself a little bit today, so I'm in a touchy feeling. <laughs> we'll get to know you really well, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. I, I pray. That you have listened to one of our shows or a few of our shows before you just says, yes, I'll come on. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been a fan for a little while. And, uh, All right. and you know what you're in for. That's oh, great. good. More or less. <laughs> you signed I, I up willingly. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, well, tell us a little bit about yourself, TJ. What's going on? So uh, I've lived in the Pacific Northwest nearly my entire life. I, uh, I, I got into filmmaking, video making, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when I was pretty young, I I took an elective in grade school, all the way back then. That was for video production, and oh, wow. uh, I I didn't know it then, but I I don't know. I I think after I did that class, it it kind of spoke to me. I was like, I think that's what I want to do. And and at that point, I I didn't know what it really meant, you know, because I didn't know the the tier of of uh, work that would be involved. You know, at, at, at that age, I was just like, this just 
seems like something I'd want to do. And uh, from there, I, I stayed in the state for, for school and I ended up going to Eastern Washington University. And that's where I met a lot of the people that I still interact with today, uh, where I, I graduated with my degree in video production. And, uh, and in between that, uh, I always came back to Seattle uh, for, for 48 hour film projects. That was kind of like my introduction to, to doing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I loved it. I mean, it was stressful at times, but I, I, I still love it. And, uh, the, the 48s that I got involved in early on, I, I was mostly just piggybacking off of other people's teams, sort of being like, I, you know, I, I, I feel green. You know, uh, I'm, I'm eager to see what I can do and what I would be good at. Um, uh -huh. And after that, I I feel like I got confident enough to, to run my own team. And uh, and then I did the 48 for several years under the uh, the team named Lasercat Films. And that's still sort of a, a, a brand name that I've been trying to float. Uh, it's It's been a collaborative project between me and a lot of people that I have known uh, growing up and people that I went to school with, uh, we always try to launch something under a, a, the, the production name of Laser Cat Films. Uh, and it's because like all of the projects that we do uh, are more than just what I contribute to it. It's, it's what other editors contribute. It's what other actors contribute. And, um, and I, I think that that's something that I've loved about film is that like, it's, uh, it's something that like I, I can't do by myself. Like I need to rely on other people to like be in the film, people to get sound, people to help with lighting, people to help in post-production. Um, and uh, in that process, I've just met some of the most interesting people in the world, I would say. I feel like I never quite know where I meet people at, whether they be cast or crew, but, um, but everyone's got stories in the Pacific Northwest. I don't know if it's exclusive to the Pacific Northwest, but like I, I, I have seen a lot and I've heard a lot and I've, I've gotten to grow with a lot of really, really awesome people. So that's, that's me. That's fantastic. Well, yeah. I, I got to go back to the very beginning of what you said. So he talked about when he was young. Yes, and then he, he brought did. up, he said that he had an elective in elementary school. What the fuck was an elective in elementary school? I either got to eat, paste, go to recess, or do whatever the fuck the teacher said. Right? Oh. Yeah. What, yeah school, it was... what school did you go to that had that <laughs> option? Like, really? It was, uh, I, I, I was raised in a Catholic school, and uh, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> How are your knuckles? <laughs> I, I'm, uh, but, How's um, your asshole doing? <laughs> no, it, it was something... It was something that was offered to seventh graders and eighth graders, and there was like a bunch of things. It was, I don't, I don't know if that was sort of like a, a pretext to like, here's something that you might be doing in high school, you know, with just like extracurricular activities and all okay. that jazz. And um, there was a there was a lot of different electives that were offered at my school at the time. And uh, I am someone who has never been very physically fit, um, so I didn't really do well with sports or anything like that um yeah. but like I, I cared about storytelling like i mm -hmm. knew that i cared about like my imagination i guess and uh and the person who taught that elective uh is someone that i, I am still uh in close contact with today and uh his name is don trujillo who, who's also been a seattle filmmaker for a very long time and uh it wasn't until like post high school i want to say that i reopened the door talking with him and he was like yeah i'm doing the 48 as well and uh at, at that point because i don't remember like every choice i made in high school obviously but at that point it was like oh yeah like i i love that elective and, and uh if you're doing something that's like that i if you need my help with any of it i'll i'll show up and you know that's where i kind of got to see what it looked like to be in a writer's room mm -hmm. uh and and what it actually feels like to be on a an actual shoot day you know because you could you could plan for anything in film and then your shoot days could end up different for millions of different reasons. Right, uh, right. Either like weather changes on you or, or uh, cast changes up on you or, or you just don't have enough time at a location. Um, but oftentimes what I feel like I've seen is like, especially in the case of like doing 48s is like uh, it sort of forces like a unique, like, 
creative solution to the problem usually. Sure. And like, I don't know, I, I, I've always been inspired by, by that process of filmmaking where it's like the original plan isn't working, but we still have to tell a story and uh what can we do with the resources that we have like i i don't really know if that happens necessarily in the world of like music production or like fine art production um but it feels like in filmmaking it's it's largely like what do we have who do we know that's good at things and, and uh, what are we comfortable trying that maybe uh would solve any problem that comes up you know whether it be like you know weather cast location anything like that and uh, but that's what I like about it, and, and uh, I felt like I, I got to come up with a lot of people that thought like that already. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess shouts out to my mentor. Uh, that's bad. Have, have you Good ever deal. had the Good experience of having, of, of, of having a shoot day and then having one of the cast members not show up? Oh, oh yeah. Because that's yeah. a fun one. <laughs> yes, it yeah. is. It's been known to happen. Yeah. Um, that sucks during a 48, let me tell you, because then you really got to wing it. Right? Yeah. 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 Um sometimes it's been like who on the cast is comfortable hopping in front of the camera. Um I, I've done that a couple of times. I sure I'm not terrified of being on camera. I, I know that like other people that work behind the scenes are, are, are just like I'm just a gaffer or I'm just a a sound tech. Mm -hmm. are sort of like oh me in there oh no not at all <laughs> and, um, i don't know i guess i'm not worried about making a fool of myself or like i because i've yeah. seen people who are like oh my god what do i do what do i do i don't have a cast and it's like i don't know like i'll i know i'm not the one that you picked for this but i'll i'll hop in if you need yeah. to no that's and that's the creative process of it isn't it like if if, if you got a team of people together and enough of them have been on film sets. They they all get yeah. the they all understand the process, right? So even yeah. though they're not really actors, if you had to have somebody fill that role, I guarantee you everybody could do it. In fact, how many how many times have we have people have never acted before that actually did a good job in a fucking movie on a part? A ton, right? They don't have to necessarily be actors to pull off acting. My own brother did a scene in our feature that we made back in 2017. He didn't even know his fucking lines. He could—he was like, "Brother, I can't believe you got me out here. This is I'm never doing this again, right?" No, he was literally. Oh, actually, just wait, 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 wait. I want to remind you what actually what he said is: if Mama was here to see me out here with no fucking shirt on in 30 degree weather, she would bust your ass. Yes, that's Thank the kind of Marcus. Thing I got yeah. you back. Yeah, I literally fed him lines off camera. And he just repeated what I said. And that's what we did it. Right. And I literally acted it out so he would act it out. <laughs> yeah. Just like I did. I just, just copy what I'm saying, fucker, and just do the goddamn thing. And that's basically what we did. And it worked. Totally worked. Um, but yeah, it's funny how you can make you can make things happen if you just if you if you don't give up. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I was just on a forty eight hour this last weekend for the Fiat. 48-hour film project, I believe it is called. I've never done one before. I mean, we did like a 72-hour, I think, Chuck, back in yeah. the day. Um, there, 2011, I'm not a big... Gig Harbor Film Festival, but I don't remember. Right, exactly. I'm not a huge fan of like film festivals in general. I'm just not. But I get why people like to do them. And, um, you know, uh, one of our actors has worked with us before, you know, really needed someone to edit the film for him. And he just reached out to me. And I told him, yeah, I got your back. You got my back all the time doing our shit. Oh, of course I'll do it. Of course I'll do it. And, you know, there was there was a dilemma on the location early on, mm. like they first started filming and then something came up and they couldn't film. There anymore. And I was like, oh, shit, they're fucked. You know, I was like, dude. And I, I watched the director just, you know, he was he was stressing. I could see it. But you know what got him through it? His fucking team. Yeah, his, his fucking team did. They, they put it yeah. all together. By the time this man came to my house and I showed him the edit, he was sitting right here on my bed. He was bawling, just straight bawling tears of emotion. It was pretty cool to see, right? That's awesome. Uh, yeah. You just like making just grown men about. cry. Well, I like oh. anybody crying. It's like I'm an emotional person, Chuck. You know that. You know this <laughs> anyway, no, it was really cool to, to see it. I was, I was proud to do it. You know, it was really neat. But uh, I get that, what you're talking about with you know, the collaboration with everybody and needing others to help you do something. Um, oh, yeah. It's an amazing thing. Yeah, I I think anyone that's involved in creating art, it, it's like there's there's a point 
that all people want to reach where it's like now i can show it to people mm -hmm. but the process of getting there is never done alone like no. it and and i don't know i have found in in times where i've tried to motivate myself to to do a, a project and I'm like well if i can't find anyone i'll just do all the voice work and i'll, I'll do all the editing it it can be pretty taxing mm -hmm. and i i have found that like a a lot of people want to help like there's like i don't know if it's like if, if it's like you know i see that you're down and, and I, I know that I can support you in some way. I, I have found filmmaking to be collaborative in that way, for sure. You're absolutely right. Uh, but, yeah. but the 48 school, because it's like, th this is something my dad said about the 48 many years ago. Because, um, you know, you get into it and then you sort of forget why you did it in the first place because now you're really stressed out mm -hmm. and you just wish you didn't start. But my dad said this thing several years ago going to one of the, the, the kickoff events. He was like, he was just talking about how excited he was because he was like, we don't even know what genre we're going to get. But by, by like the end of this 48 hours, we're going to have made something that we hadn't previously thought about. And that is really freaking cool. Yeah, and exactly. I was like, well, I was like, yeah, it's like, you know, we, I think some people get paralyzed by like, oh, what if I get musical or what if I get like something that's like really hard? It's like, mm. I don't know, like accept the challenge of it. See where it takes you. Right, exactly. Uh, and, and just because you get musical doesn't mean you can't make a comedy. Well, While yeah, showing I mean, off that yeah. you can't make a musical. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's exactly right. Um, yes, yeah, some of the best forty eights I've seen have been just random. Right. You know, like yeah, people people have made amazing musicals in the forty eight as well. I just say musical because most people, it's like if they draw a musical, they're like, oh, what do I do? Yeah, I like, lose my shit. I, I'd be like, I quit. Fuck you. I can't do it. <laughs> can't stand musicals chuck you'd have to help me bro but i don't need you dancing in it and shit that'd be weird because i know you'd go straight to your draws and i don't want to see you under again i'm good i'm good um you know what i like about the 48 that i i, I got out of it I, I realized that i think that time crunch you have really gets people off their fucking asses and to make something so if you sign up you're you're you you gotta go and I'm all about yeah. like go every day anyway with our stuff. You know, I'm motivated to do that every day where I think a lot of other people can get sidetracked or, you know, they question things or whatever. Life gets in the way, you know, um, yeah. but with a 48, you lock in. Now, imagine if these same filmmakers that do these 48s could lock in like that every fucking day. What could they create over and over again? How how good of a filmmaker could they be if they put that kind of pressure on themselves every day? That's what I got out of it. And I, I absolutely yeah. love that part. Of it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it, it is when it works out well, it, it can feel like lightning in a bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But it's it's uh, I, I, I think it's awesome for people that are also even just like considering it like they're like, I don't even know where to start with film. It's like right. hop on a 48 team, you will learn so much. And cool. even if it's not a great experience, right? I, I, I was on a 48 team once where the crew mutinied against the director. That wasn't fun, but like... <laughs> Wait, the crew happen. mutinied against the director? He like fucking sucks. Shit, motherfucker, Let's, we're gonna go make home. this shit. Get him out of here. He sucks. <laughs> well, it was... Wait, wait, this wasn't like, one of yours, right? No, it was not one of mine. Okay, just, um, just making sure before we carry on. I mean, I, I've, I, I have been told in the past that I use a director's voice, and I don't know if this is like me like switching out of the person I usually am, but I, okay. I have been told before uh, that I've used my director's voice on somebody. And I was like, oh God, what does that sound like? Yeah, what's that sound like? Do it, do it, do it. I want to hear it. Can you do it? I don't know. I mean, you have to... <laughs> I, I, I don't know if this is just a voice that I hop into when I'm in pressure, but like, I don't know. I, I, I think part of working in film, and maybe it's not the best part of working in film, but like oftentimes, especially if you're on a production where, you know, everyone's here for a really specific job, if you get asked to do something, you kind of just like if you don't know how to do it it's okay to ask but right. you should do it and you should do it because like things have to keep moving along and, and things can get can get stuck and in, in, especially in the higher level production mm -hmm. for for things that are sometimes out of the control of everyone's hands besides like the client or besides like um you know maybe sound is having an issue and, and now sound like we no one else can move forward until we solve this issue and, and that can be stressful yeah. um 
but I guess what I what I mean to say is that like uh, I I find that with the with the Portier, it's like it, it it forces you to get into that decision making headspace of like we don't have the time, you know what 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 can we do with the time we are given, mm-hmm. and uh, there there is a way to maximize it. Like I I feel like I've done it enough where it's like I know I can do it, and now I'm sort of running into the wall of like well. I mean, we we made a good 48. We've made a couple of good 48s. Now, like, what would happen if we had more time? And uh, it's kind of what you're saying about like uh, having a uh, pushing yourself to that extent, not just within the 48 hour time period. Like, and uh, you mentioned a 70. uh, I think that was Charles who mentioned a 72. Yep. Um, 72s are interesting as well because it's like it almost feels like. It, like you're gonna have to rest in 72 hours mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like inevitably but then it's a question of when right, right. it's like do, you, do yeah. you try to maximize for one day and then you edit for two days or do you do something where you kind of shoot a lot of it over, mm-hmm. or, or you know like do you maximize your location do you do you choose to make something where you know that the edit is not going to be terribly complicated right you know right. these are just decisions that you got to make when you're we did. Uh, I think we we did a pretty special effects heavy one too. We, yeah, we did oh, a special cool. effects heavy one. We shot everything in one evening. Yes, and, and then we let him fix everything in post for the next thirty six hours. I think we went back, I think we went back on day two and did all the green screen stuff, the green screen shots because I think we used the restaurant. Remember, we set the green screen up in there to shoot the, you know, when you were shrinking the down shrink, the shrinking man, the shrinking stuff. And then I think I took a day and a half, and the next that afternoon or evening, all through the next morning to edit the film and get it up in time. I think that's what we did. But I still like that, even though we had to cut the ending because I made it too long. But oh well. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Aaron, you have a two hour time limit. Well the hour the movie is three hours and twelve minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sucked. That was the one thing that pissed me off. I'm like, time limit? God damn it. I was like fifty seconds over. And the ending had to go. And it was the best ending. You know, and that's when I said, fuck these, I'm never doing them again. Shit. And here I did one, so it's fine. It's, um, well, the funny thing is, is we could have actually just eliminated one character, which yeah. would have been my character, because the other character said all the lines that you needed to have in the fucking forty eight. Yeah, or, but so, I, yeah. but you're you're you getting shrunk was hilarious. I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> fucking. I could. Wait, wait. That. So did, did you not keep a, a director's cut? I did. did not, that, like, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that's on We've YouTube. Got that. Yeah, that's somewhere. Yeah, it's somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that thing. The dating scene. Ooh. The dating fun. scene. 13 freaking years ago. At least, yeah. Wow. It was 2011's oh, it was. film festival. Yeah. I think it was the last one we did, too. Yeah. Well, I was, um, I was just pissed off because they gave us all this free swag and none of the shit fit. Mm. Well, my shirt fits, still. I still got it. Yes, your shirt did fit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Director. <laughs> okay, speaking of that, TJ, you, you had mentioned something earlier about, you know, your your director's voice. Well, what kind of director would you think you are? Like what what's your style? What how are you do you work with the actors a lot? Are you more technical? What which well, how do you how do you direct? Um I would say in the last two or three years, like a lot of the professional work I've done has been more focused on the editing side of things. So I think I, when I direct, I, I think of it almost like I'm already in front of the editing screen. Okay. Uh, I, I, I've, I've worked with some people and other directors who like go for coverage, 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 and you can spend hours getting coverage, but like, there's this weird thing that can happen where it's like, you kind of know that you're not going to use a lot of it. I know exactly what um, you're saying. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's like, uh, I, I find that like the, the main reason that people are going to want to watch this is because they want to see what happens to these characters. Like it could be shot beautifully, it, you know, you could get you could get all the stylish stuff that you want, but if the characters aren't interesting or if they like, like I think one of the worst things that you can say about a a movie or, or about a character is that they're they're unrelatable. Because um, if they're unrelatable, then it's you know it's just farcical. But like mm-hmm. I I find that I like to spend most of my time with the cast um it i i had a i had a really really interesting uh quarter towards the end of uh my film school that was just called uh acting for directors and they forced or not forced but like we were gently encouraged to direct each other and uh we really got into the heart of like 
what each line of dialogue really means mm -hmm. and like there especially in film there's there's always like um and, and this is the example that got brought to us in school is it was like you could say something like in a, in a story or in a screenplay it looks like it's going to rain today and that can mean a million different things to two different characters but if you say it and, and then you give it the, the direction of like i i attack you with that you say it differently and then you find like a nuance in the way that these characters are talking to each other and uh i i have found that i like to work with actors and uh people that uh i've, I've worked with before because i i feel like i I feel like I see strengths in people. Mm -hmm. Like one of one of the actors that I absolutely adore, uh, David Stoker. I, I've worked with this guy for years, and he is someone who like he never says no to anything. Um, and I, I I think it's just because he knows that he's capable of doing anything. And uh, I I have typecasted him as a bad guy a lot of the time. But he hasn't we, always we have played too. that guy. <laughs> we, we did too, yeah. Yeah, we did too. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So oh, you, know, you look it's in this thing and like a dick. Yeah, you're, you're going to be this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. He's great. Yeah, we had a... we I, A 48, I'm still really proud of that that had him as, as a lead character. Um, the name of it is escaping me right now. I think we just called it David, actually. Oh, okay. It's perfect. We, we couldn't think of what name for it. Yeah, David. Um, but we we had him as a character who, uh, like the whole premise of the story was like uh, all of these people knew about this guy as like an acquaintance, and and they only had bits and pieces of this man, and then he he died trying to protect somebody in in a complete accident, right? He he saw someone was in danger, steps in, and then he he dies as a result of it, and then all of these characters who know him as an acquaintance are trying to talk to the daughter about like who he was and like oh well you probably knew him best and what we come to discover by the end of the story is that like she didn't know this guy at all but we know that david cares uh through like all the coverage that we got and and like it, I, I don't know for me that was like a story where it was like we could have david play someone who is like multifaceted and mm -hmm. someone who's like got layers to him and it's like i i, I had a lot of fun with that project with david because it was like even though that there's not a lot in the story like in terms of like script playing it's like you have this opportunity to like really embody a character and show just like different sides of yourself to different people sure and like i don't know i find that kind of filmmaking to be really interesting um it's like i i worry about typecasting people all the time um but i know that like with with all actors and actresses it's like they want stuff that puts them outside of like what they're normally doing mm -hmm. it's like actors are the only people in the world that are like give me something that is unlike anything that i've done before and like that can be really really exciting it can be like i i sort of get like hyped up with like some some talent that i've worked with before where it's like yeah i know we've done it like this way for a couple of projects but like what if we made your character completely different for this next thing and and i'm casting you because i believe in your ability to be like a, a chameleon you know, I, I I know that you are comfortable playing a bad guy. I know that you are comfortable playing um, like a, a suave character. What if you played someone who was like introverted or had trouble talking to these other people? Like, I know that's not like in your character in real life, but like as, as an actor, like you, you kind of embrace opportunities where you get to be something that you're not. Um, so I, I guess to answer your question is I, I really like working with, with talent mostly because I feel like you're able to get the most out of uh, just people who want to show themselves. And uh, that can be really, really exciting. Absolutely. Yep. I'm, I'm that same style. And I think Chuck kind of is too. You're, Chuck's a little more organized than I am when he's directing. However, um, I think we both adore, you know, working with the actors. That's, that's the best thing on the planet. In fact, as far as script writing goes, you know, I, I only write one draft of a story. I never go in and write other drafts. I just don't. Um, I give them the script and open it up for interpretation. You know, let the actors yeah. off of that foundation. I think that brings out 
you know exactly what you're talking about that 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 side that multi multifaceted character that they could find right something that i can't fucking write alone you know i don't i yeah. i don't sit in a room with you know four or five other writers and we brainstorm we don't got the time you know we're all indie filmmakers we got shit to do during the day we got families to take care of you know it's not like we do this professionally all of us all at once now i'm trying to do it alone but you know my team has jobs they're still working the day stuff so it's yeah. kind of like uh, how do you do this then how do you make this a collaborative story that's how you do it yeah. at least that's how we do it and it, it it always seems to bring out not only some of the best work we've done but it it also builds the bond with your your cast they really well, yeah, appreciate it's like a, a that. trust reciprocation thing it's like yeah. i believe in the thing that you've written but like someone has to say it out loud and for an actor it might be like well i wouldn't say it like that and yeah. that's like a unique point to like there, there is no wrong answer. You know, it's Correct. like, it's, it's like you could write something, you could, you could cast someone for it, but like ultimately, like, I applaud you for also leaving it up to the actor's discretion. It's like you're the one that's performing. Yeah, you know? exactly. And and now they're more invested in it, you know. And that's where oh, yeah. we, we we used to make the joke about it all the time, like, well, you know, now if it sucks, it's all our fault. It's just not mine. It's <laughs> Chuck's. Right. It's, if, if it sucked, you changed it. You fucked yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah, you fucked it up. That's My favorite you, one was like, <laughs> that's too many was in like not was like the word was, but too many w's. It's like too many wa sounds in like a paragraph. Like mm-hmm. I can't do that. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right. It's like, well, change it. Right. <laughs> it, it's. Yeah. It's weird though, right? It's like if you if you're typing out a script, I, I have found this in my own life. Like, I could write something out, and then once I say it out loud, it's like, well, no one talks like that at Nobody all. Nobody talks. You know, like or, or or surprisingly enough, I usually do. Yeah, yeah, oh, well. you do actually, Chuck. You do <laughs> kind of. But no, you're right, TJ. It's, What's this it's analytical babble. Yeah, it reads well on paper, and you're like, oh no, this sounds good, and then you get on set and goes, that does not fucking work. That is fuck. Yeah. Who wrote this shit? Oh, I did. Fuck, I suck. That's exactly how you feel. <laughs> um, but no, you're absolutely right, man. It, it's a it's a weird transition from paper to screen. But but it's it's, like, a, it's, it's good. It's it's like. But it how works. Else make, yeah, exactly. That's what's so crazy about it. It's like wow, we we actually took these words that somebody wrote and made visual images sound and color graded this whole thing and oh we even threw in some special effects and we made a yeah. fucking movie and some people do it in 48 fucking hours how about that more it's power badass. to them yeah it's badass i love it i fucking love well, it what's what's funny for me is like going back just one second here is just thinking about the, the 48 stuff and it's like when you were asked to edit that i was like this is perfect i mean one of the things i've always said would be one of aaron's perfect jobs is to do dailies for anybody who's making a movie wants mm-hmm. to see a quick edit he puts together the puzzle faster than anybody so yeah it's like i got a six minute short great i'll have it to you in six hours i think i, I got need an hour that. per minute it was pretty i think it was faster than that i think i got it in under four <laughs> like i think i did <laughs> hell yeah yeah i mean it was quick and 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 bill fucking loved it and i'm like yeah well it seemed to work and he's like oh i didn't even think about going the back and forth he did and i'm like well that's my job Fucker, that's why I, <laughs> you hired me. You to just do it, record man. it, get all the angles, and I'll, yeah. I'll put it together. Yeah, yeah, but it's um, you know, that's that's the fun thing, man. Just having that opportunity to to do anything like this in a creative format is um, especially a collaborative one. Like we always talk about when we're on the show, Chuck. Just the, you know, how this medium has like everything in it. You know, it's from the music to the visuals to the sound. You know, all of it is there. It's just not one thing. Right, it's right. Just yeah. one thing, and that's crazy if you think about how it all melds together and comes and turns into what it does. I, I'm fascinated by it. Always will be. Always have been since I was a little kid. So, and it's yeah. crazy when I look at the films we've made or others are making now, and just you know, I can't help but go. Even if I don't like the piece that somebody makes, I, I still appreciate the fucking effort they put in. You know, well, yeah, it, it's not easy. I, I do firmly believe that like. People that make films, whether they be short films or documentary films or feature films, like no one sets out to make something that sucks. Correct. Like it might be an un- un- unintentional reality, mm-hmm. um, but like I want to say 99% of the time, people do it because they feel compelled to do it. They feel like they have to do it, or or they're mm-hmm. they're driven to do it because of the support of like people that they know. Like, um, yeah, I mean, this year that was the only reason that I. I made my short film 404 was because I, I knew that I had a lot of people that would 
support the endeavor. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, I, I'm not going to do it unless I know I have like people that would help me with it. Cause like, I, it's too hard to do it on your own. You gotta, yeah. well, you gotta find people that, that know how to do it. Yeah. I was definitely going to ask you about that. Um, your new film, but y your process in it. So why don't you, um, give us a lowdown on what 404 is, and then we'll talk about like the production of it real quick and go into sure. what you're trying to do with it now. So, yeah. So 404 is a, is a short crime thriller. Uh, it's, it's set in the year 2023 and we're following, uh, two kids named Jack and Tyson who have been, um, really influenced by the by the biffing culture of san francisco and they uh they're 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 kids who are just trying to see what they can get away with and for them it's shoes it's money it's anything that isn't nailed down and they've had enough of a successful streak that they feel like that they can keep doing it they're and of course it, it, yeah <laughs> it's something that tends to happen to young kids it's something that I feel like I relate to it's like mm -hmm. if you get away with something you tend to do it again until you get caught and like uh, I I made this film just because uh, it, it was it was actually it sort of started as a, as a short story idea from my dad uh, he because my, my dad he, he definitely cultivated my love of movies and we just spent hours just talking back and forth about like why stories are the way that they are and he he told me like a short story idea. He was like, I don't know how we'd ever do this or if it would ever come up for a 48 or anything like that. But imagine you have two kids and these two kids, they, they, they steal a bag. And, uh, and, and once they look inside the bag, it's full of money. And then, oh crap, what's going to happen next? And I, I thought that that was like just enough of like an interesting hook, right? It's like, cause, um, it, it's, I, I think that like in general, like films and, and, and short stories, even, they like they have to start like just before like a life changes and it's like sort of figuring out like where in this person's journey are they most likely to change like um you know classic example breaking bad right you wouldn't have breaking bad start two years prior to the cancer diagnosis because right. nothing nothing would happen for two years yeah i mean it might be yeah. interesting it'd be boring you know, as fuck see, right? <laughs> exactly right but, but, but Breaking Bad chooses to start like right when the the, the character of, of Walter White is, is unable to continue to be the person he is. Like he's mm -hmm. sort of forced into change by circumstance. And and it's like I, I find that the best kind of storytelling is, is like that. So from there I sort of took the, the short story idea and I, I kept on rewriting it and uh, eventually turned it into a like a short screenplay. And, uh, and then from there, I got enough of my uh, film collaborative friends in on it. And they were like, hey, this sounds like a good idea. It sounds like it'll be exciting. And then I threw in the need for a gun battle because I personally want to watch stuff with gun battles. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I me too. Really my man, um, love it. Yeah. yeah. That's great, dude. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, Aaron's like, hey, what if the guy just walked in and punched him in the face? Aaron, this is a faith-based film. It's not exactly <laughs> appropriate. I don't I know. I know. It I seems like it'd be it, great. Especially right. now. Yeah, it'll make me watch a faith-based film. You know what I mean? It'd be great. <laughs> it could be like religious, you know, like yeah. motivating. Like, Hell yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's a hard mm -hmm. pitch. A religious film that condones yeah. violence. Dude's fighting for his faith or something. He's a badass. He don't fuck yeah. around. You know what I mean? Yeah. No? Okay, great. That's fine. Um, <laughs> You might have an untapped market there. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. It's very. It's 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 a very very narrow niche of yeah, what is. we are doing. Yeah. So, um, so what? So tell us a little bit about how you go about finding people to help you make a movie. A lot of people who are just starting don't know what that process is like. You know, um, do you do anything? Anything that you think is unique, or do you just basically hit up people and go, "Hey, dude, you know, this is what I'm doing. You interested?" Um, I, I mean, the, the way that I do a lot of film work is like, I, I feel like the only way that I can really ask other people for like support, uh, is to, is to first be supportive myself to other productions. Like I, I, I have like this firm belief of like, I would never ask someone to do something that I didn't think I could do, but like, I, I, I trust other people and I think um, other people have trusted me and uh, I I met a lot of the people that I work with today 
just working on sets and like meeting people through like networking events like seattle's always been an interesting pool because it's like it's big but it's not big and i i have found that i keep on running into the same people um like even the the sound mixer that we had for this project uh daniel chang who's awesome uh i i met daniel i think originally we were both pas on a toyota shoot Okay. And like it was super boring. It was many days of just standing around. Standing and, around and as a PA. Oh, I get it. Yeah, well, you know, and, and here we are looking at a beautiful car and yeah. talking about how awesome this car is. But right. like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think we just kinda hit it off and, and Daniel told me he was like, Yeah, I'm trying to I think I want to become a sound operator and uh, yeah. and I you know you spend enough time with other people, you you figure out like uh what they're good at or what they're passionate about and um and from there, I was like, well, I think it had been two or three years, and, and I saw uh, Daniel again as a sound operator, and it was like, oh my god, dude, you made it. Like, for lack of a better say, you made it. And like, uh, then it was like, well, if I know I can rely on you for sound, like, I would love to work with you again when we're not PAs, right? Like, let's continue to build each other's ladders of things. Right. Um, and like, uh, I, what I have found is like a lot of the People that I keep up with, um, especially like names like Patrick Gonzalez or Nikki Smith. I don't know if you guys know these two, but uh, oh, yeah, we know them. They're 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 cool kids. They yep, yep, yep. I I have uh, I have known them for years, and uh, and I help them out in all their projects, and uh, and I kind of got the green light from both of them after like just assisting as like a grip or, or anything with, with mm -hmm. their project because I because I know what it's like to, to work a. a a shoot day that you know is originally promised to be you know, an eight-hour day that turns into a twelve-hour day. Like mm -hmm. I think that there are there are a lot of people who have that happen, and it's like I can't do that. Like eight hours, I'm done. Right. Um, but I I don't know if there's just something in me that's just like I don't want to give up on things. Like I I don't really see the I I don't find it to be a very like helpful practice to decide like after eight or nine hours of doing this thing, I'm just going to stop caring. Like, I I don't think I have that in me. Um, and I, I, I know that, like, if I don't give, like, my all to the people that, you know, also do it, then why should I expect them to do the same for me? And so it, it sort of became a, a, I feel like in the last year or so, it, it's been like, hey, like, I, I will support you guys with whatever you need, and I know that you guys will support me with, with anything that I do. And, uh, and so I kind of built my network that way, just working with other people and uh, showing up to things that they invite me to, uh, especially if it sounds like, like Nikki had me over one time for like filming a, a little thing that like, I had no idea what I was doing. And like, by the end of it, I was kind of like, man, if, if you would have explained it to me like this six hours ago, it would have made a lot more sense, but uh, like, I, I don't know. I, I think he was dealing with, you know, the, the director brain of things of like, right, I'm so right. focused on getting what I need to get done that I'm not going to explain to everyone else how to do the thing that I need done. Um, and for me, part. it was like, well, it's hard, you know, it it, hard. When, you get, when you, when you get tunnel visioned and, and you're focused on getting something done, it's sort of like, well, all these extra people who are showing up, they, they probably know what's going on. Mm -hmm. I never know what's going on. So it's like, I just kind of hopped in and, and he was basically just filming a whole bunch of like bumper ads to play uh, in between films for this film festival. And like, for me, the script was just like one or well, like, like a random page and we're doing something over here. And now I'm over in the other side of the house doing something completely different. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how these two are correlated, but I'll, I'll give you what you ask. And uh, yeah. Um, Patrick, I, I think one of the defining moments I really had with Patrick Gonzalez was I, I had worked with him for just off and on on different production gigs and kept on seeing him around. And uh, he had a 48. And uh, the, the interesting thing about this 48, and he probably remembers it a little bit differently, but he, he knew that we were going to shoot at a, at a houseboat. And so because I was just part of the day crew, I was like, I'm just going to show up to the houseboat. And uh, and, and I'll just wait for the crew to arrive and I'll help everyone unload. And then like I got there 8 a.m. because call time was 8 a.m. I'm sitting there and like 40 minutes go by and I'm like, where is everybody? And then 
I hear from Patrick, like, oh, there's been all the way of a slowdown. And I'm like, okay. And then another, like, 45 minutes, 30 minutes passes or so, and, and Patrick shows up with a car full of gear. And he tells me, he's like, hey, so the whole crew quit. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, that sucks. What the fuck and, did you say? I, I don't know. I mean, Patrick, what did you say like, to them? I don't know if it was worth taking any sides on this, but it sounds like that everyone who was a part of the project was just like, no, like, we're just not going to do it. And it was a 48, so... Wow. Like, it, for Patrick, he was like, I got this car full of gear, and, and I don't, like, what do I do now? And uh, mm-hmm. and I knew that my mentor, uh, Don Trujillo, was, was also making a 48, and I was like, well, shit, dude, like, you want to make a movie this week? I'm going to go make a movie with those guys. Like, we know that they're doing it, like, 30 minutes that way. And, uh, and I, I could tell that Patrick was, like, really discouraged, because why wouldn't you be? I mean, right. you, you set out to make a film, and... And for whatever reason, Shit things just down. don't work out. Yeah. yeah. And and I that is a situation that's not unique to filmmaking. I, I know that that happens in professional spheres everywhere. Mm-hmm. But like, uh, I, I think that the saving grace of that was uh, tw- towards the end of like just helping out on someone else's film shoot that, that just also happened to be going on because it was a 48 weekend. Patrick was like, I, I think we could still film something tomorrow. And I was kind of like, really? Like, you think we could do something like in less time? And he was like, yeah, well, I just just want to do it. And I was like, all right, man, like, let's do it. Like, and and somehow we ended up making like two 48s in the span of 48 hours, even though the, the second 48 was, was really, really truncated. He basically just had me talking on a green screen. Gotcha. He had like four pages of script that were complete nonsense. <laughs> and then he was like, it was like a talking head sort of like, like a newscaster thing with again the green screen and then i was like well my roommate has a pickup truck that you could live stream from you know and, and so he ended up doing that too and it was interesting like we kind of just like threw everyone we knew into it it was like hey like we only have one day to film this and you know most of the time when you talk like that to other people they're like oh i can't make it it sounds like too much of a commitment but i think we found just enough people on that last day who were like yeah fuck it i got nothing going on for a couple hours like what do you want me to do like uh, good thing. Yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and I, I don't know. I felt like we made the most out of that crappy situation. Like losing yeah. your whole team for a forty-eight sucks. Yeah, like, I, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. No, um, no, it's, you know, a, it's we keep doing it. Yeah, exactly, and it's it's tough. It's tough, but at the same time, you still, I love to hear that story because it just it it just narrows down the drive of just figuring the shit out in the moment and that's what's so cool you can't avoid that when you're doing even a feature i mean shit's gonna oh, happen yeah. when you're doing a feature yeah. um we've ran through that stuff but we always wing it but you know being being like bruce lee said be like water you just gotta fucking flow you know mm. you just flow if, if an obstacle gets in your way you just kind of go around it. and you know what happens a majority of the time you get better shit to be honest with you you know honestly oh, yeah. it seems like you get really authentic cool stuff that you didn't even think of, you know, months before when you wrote the script, and you're looking at it going, "Fuck, I like this better," and it's, it's badass. So I don't know. Yeah. I, think, I don't think you should ever give up on on something once you get out there. Fucking film something, god damn it. You know what I mean, Chuck? Yeah. It, yeah. 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 Um, it's it's hard when people bail on you at the last minute. That, yeah, going from being so discouraging to you encouraging them to go do something else. I don't know if I would have agreed with. No, let's do one more thing tomorrow. It's like, wait a minute, what the f- dude? <laughs> but kudos to you for actually helping your buddy out and keeping him encouraged when he was doing that. Well, yeah, and it's really cool that you've got that philosophy too, and I think that's important because that's exactly what we do. Um, you know, you don't sometimes you don't have the money to pay people to, for their time, right? So how can you pay them back? You do shit for them. <laughs> you know, it's a barter yeah. system. I actually color graded an entire feature film for Robert Lasardo for him to be in one episode of our horrorverse one day of his time and his whole Six movie I co- <laughs> you know what i mean but it was worth it to me because i'm like shit we got Robert Lasardo in the horrorverse this is kind of cool you know and um and it was honor color grading this fucking movie for him so I, where did i lose i didn't 
you know, I, I didn't. I got to work on someone else's project. I got to sharpen my skills at color grading. Um, yeah. I'm proud of the movie that he made. I'm proud of the episode we made for him, with him in it. And um, yeah, that's how you do it. You know, sometimes you don't need the money. And that's why I'm glad you, you brought that up because I think it's vital for other filmmakers to hear that, you know, just because you don't have the money or means doesn't mean you don't have the skill level to help somebody else out and they might return that favor. And that's, that's yeah. what it's about. Right. Good for you. Good for you. See, now, if everybody thought like that, Chuck, we wouldn't have any problems, right? <laughs> yeah, they don't think that way. <laughs> and that's okay. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to happen every time. But no. I think for, for the people that that are reciprocal in that nature, like, I, stay stay with them. Yeah, like, exactly. And those are the you're people. You're only going to grow. Yep. You make a team with them. And, and you know those people. You know, like Nicky Smith. We've, I've worked with him a few times. Uh, he can light his ass off. He's a hell of a you know, gaffer, he can light a shot. He's really good at it. Um, but we've, we've worked with so many people up here, you know, in our projects that you, you, you tend to see the ones that know they're in it for the right reasons and, and love just making movies and, and, you know, working with the, the teams that are put together and everybody kind of knows each other, you know, and some like others more than others. And you, you can just kind of weed through it all and you can kind of see it. And then you, you realize, well, who do I really love working with? You know, what brings out the best in me when I'm around these people? And do I do the same for them? And if you find yeah. those people, you, you, you hold on to them, dude. <laughs> you hang in there. Yeah. That's fucking cool, man. Good for you. Um, yeah. Okay. So 404, you got a crowdfunder going on, I think, right now. Is that right? Yes. It has oh. just started. Okay. And I have no experience run. in running a crowdfunding campaign. Yeah, so this is my a... first day into the world of. Well, you only learn by trying, bro. And that, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah, and you will learn how hard that shit fucking is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, we've done a few of them, and our last one was. It was all right. It was successful, um, but not anywhere near I thought what we would get. But at the same time, the amount of work that I know I put in on that, and the rest of the team did, it's like, dude. I busted my ass a, every fucking day. It's a full-time job. Every fucking day. I was reaching out to... I, I couldn't tell you how many people I reached out to um, to get the ball rolling. And literally, personally, calling them, emailing them, messenger, all of it. Like, literally. And begging. Begging, hey, check yeah. out shit, you know. And, and that's what you got to do. It's like cold calling all day long. And if you if you grind it out, you, you can get somewhere. And don't be afraid to get those no's or people saying or, or ghost in you you know that you see that they saw your fucking message yeah and you're like oh you motherfucker aren't even going to respond <laughs> you know that's okay though just yeah. just grind it out man just grind it out and you'll be surprised at how many people would support you you really will yeah i i i know that um a lot of people in, in my life have, have been following what i've been doing and cool. uh and uh, yeah i mean for part of the for part of making 404, I, I was I was temporarily in a different housing setup, so I had to like move while I was also filming the movie. And I know that the people Ouch. that I lived with for a brief period of time saw that I was not giving up with it. And so I, I think like I I don't know I it, I, I do agree. Like I I, I don't want to be like oh it's going to be easy reason because because uh, I know it's hard. I mean there there is a million different reasons <laughs> or a million different things that people have to the fun besides art and, it, and it's like you know why why fun this well because i i think that everyone that was involved in it like shined and, yeah. and i i want them to get you know what the recognition that they deserve and and like yeah I, uh, part of the funding for it is just you know covering festival fees because mm -hmm. uh, that can be expensive that that can be and it can be a real money pit i i've done it a couple of times before and you know just sort of thinking like oh well, i'll just keep on paying for festival fees and, and you know it'll end up somewhere and then you go back and you kind of look at like all the things you submitted to and it's like, like yeah, we should have kept track of my finances like <laughs> thank uh, god i like top ramen <laughs> yeah, yeah you know you make you make compromises for your health to make yeah. sure that things um, but you just make compromises for your health <laughs> <laughs> well you know eating top ramen yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, it's not good for you, Chuck. It's fine. It's a lot okay. of sodium. It is a lot of sodium. It's pretty good, though, especially with hot sauce on it. 
Oh, there, nice. Yeah, it's good. Chop up onions and toss it in there. Oh yeah, fucking yeah, dude. Throw, I'd make a whole some, dish. Throw some chives in there, some pork. Yeah, yeah pork. Yeah. Or yeah. Hamburger. Next hamburger. thing you know, you, hit it, you next thing you know, you have lo mein. <laughs> yeah, you do. Really, <laughs> you do. Um, okay, well that that's a good way to do it. So the film is done though, and you're just working on post, right? Yeah. And, yeah, and I the, have a I have a couple of editors that I'm talking to that that I, I've worked with that are in the process of sort of giving me feedback and making it tighter. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's great. Okay. And then, and then your crowdfunder is going to help to get this thing dispersed so that, you know, you can get more eyeballs on it and your cast, your crew can be proud that you're going to be able to see it on the big screen and maybe win yeah. some awards, maybe win something. So that that's all great, man. That's what you do, bro. Good for you. Good yeah. For you. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Do you, you have a YouTube channel. Is that right? Yes. Uh, okay. Our YouTube channel is laser cat films. And okay. uh, that's sort of been the, the hosting place for, for all of the projects that I've, that I've worked with and that my friends have worked on. And uh, there's a lot of ancient videos in there. Uh, Those are fun. That though. like, well, it, it, I don't know. I mean, a, a lot of them. We all start somewhere. Don't make excuses. <laughs> that's true. But, but like, I don't know. I've, I've seen people with other YouTube channels where it's like, oh, I gotta, gotta go back through and delete these things because they're so cringy. And it's right. Like, but they all represented like moments in the, in and the it's journey your growth yeah it's your growth yeah, yeah like I, I don't know if, if you two feel this way with your projects but like in, in all of the projects that i've worked on like even if i'm just doing post or, or, or i was physically in it or, or i was just doing lighting on it when i watch a project again i can kind of like remember where i was yeah. and it's like I, I feel like film is able to be like a really unique time capsule for that reason Oh, wow. you, you get that warm that was, feeling that in your stomach, years. right? In your tummy, and it just gets yeah. all warm, and you're just like, oh, I remember, dude. Oh, that was so fun. And then you just, you're gone. You're back there. Yeah. I know what you're saying. I, 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 I think that that's a really cool exp- I don't know if that really happens with, with any other art form. I, mean, I don't know. Music does that, that for That's me. something. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you remember, I think everyone can remember, like, the first time that they heard a song where I was like, that was where I first heard. Yep. Rooster by Alice in Chains or something. Right? Exactly. You just remember it. And you remember where you were. Yep. I, I can go back to the early 80s and hitting the fucking Sony Walkman, walking to the bus and listening to like Broken Wings, you know? <laughs> you know, something cool that was on or Your Cindy Lauper song. Time. I know, but still. It's fine. <laughs> Chuck, yeah, I know. I know, but it's still, you know, it's music. It, it, and everybody's got their their time frames, their, their windows yeah. that they remember. And, uh, 90s was one of them too. I totally remember when Rooster came out. Jesus Christ, that was great. I, I, I heard that song with my dad, and then I saw the music video for it because he told me about the music video for it. Yeah. Like, Damn, that thing was hard. It like, was hard, dude. It's so good. I was like, whoa! Like, I can't <laughs> believe that they just committed to the bit here, like in an interesting story that kind of leads into it. And yeah, it's wow, great. Like, it's fucking great, dude. It's so good. All right, man. Well, dude, it's a pleasure. Meeting you finally. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. Uh, and um, we'll well. see, but he worked with you guys work with Giovanni in your movie too. I love Giovanni. That's one of the nicest yes. dudes I've ever fucking yeah. met in my life. I love that guy. I love him. Yeah, Gi- Giovanni was a hoot. Giovanni was was so outgoing and uh he, he plays, you know, a terrifying hitman in this movie. But like when the cameras weren't rolling, he was just a goofball in the yeah. best possible way. And uh, so much so that you were almost worried. It's like, is this guy going to get in character? What the fuck? Yeah, I know. No, no, no. I, <laughs> and Elsie's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He's a badass, though. He's, he's a true actor, and yeah. uh, he, he, I'm I'm eager to, to to give something to him in the future with 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 more character than just being a kid, obviously. Do um, do me a favor. Do me a favor. If you haven't watched our last horrorverse film, um, The Hunt. Check it out. Uh, Giovanni plays a huge part in it, and he's he's fucking great. And Hell yeah. What's uh, Stoker's episode? I think it's episode eight. That's the Ep- short we episode did. Episode eight. That was the yeah, last one Bullet. for uh, yeah. Stoker. Stoker plays a, a heinous villain in that. He's so good in yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. You should the check it out leader. if you get a chance. Yeah. He's so yeah. good, man. He's so good. Him and Carl Covington were getting down. So good. It's no joke. It's no mm-hmm. joke. Anyway, dude. All right. Well, absolute pleasure, buddy. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bro. Yeah. Th- thanks for having me on. I was eager to talk to you fellas and Hell hope yeah. that uh, I can share the final film with you when it's when it's totally done. I, I know that we've only seen like the preview of it. Uh, well, you've you got a good yeah. start. You're right there. How, right how, there. how are you feeling when you think you'll have your final cut done? 
I, I'm very confident that I'm going to have a final cut uh, either by November or December because uh, I, I, I really want to finish it ahead of a 2025 festival run. Um, and I also know that like if it stays in the game forever, it will never leave my brain. So I no, need to make sure that like it, it's done. Yeah, you have, to you, have, you have to. Yeah, my advice to other filmmakers: you're gonna make something, finish it. Because yep. uh, if yep. you don't finish it, it'll just it'll just sit there forever. And, and there, I don't know. I don't know if all creative people feel this way, where it's like you make something and then it sort of sits at like the eighty percent done, or like the eighty-five percent done. It's like, oh man, you know, I just I need to film two more scenes and then this thing will be done. It's like. Right. Finish it, finish yeah. it, and allow yourself to to move on and make cooler shit in the future. Because we'll always make cooler shit in the future too. Goddamn right, goddamn right. That's right. I don't have a problem with that. I usually have the movie edited before we shoot it, so I don't fuck around. Well, there you go. <laughs> get it done. Yep, it's got to get done. Yeah. Um, well, absolute pleasure, buddy. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Um, Chuck, close out the show, man. TJ, thank you for joining us today on Around the Real. Thank you for hanging out for a conversation about all things creative. It's always fun to make sure that you uh, get a chance to work with people that you enjoy working with. And if those you don't, set them aside and just keep moving forward with those you do. Because if you are going to chase a dream, you might as well do it with people that you enjoy doing it with. And one of those things about doing this is you're chasing a dream. You're bringing something to reality that nobody else thought of. And that's kind of what being creative is all about. So don't let it sit on the shelf. Get your things finished. Get out there and get people's eyes on it. And remember to think hard. Because you're thinking anyway. We'll see everybody later. See you. Hey, would you like to be a guest on the Around the Real podcast? If so, just reach out to Around the Real 253 at gmail.com. That's Around the Real 253 at gmail.com. And remember, keep punching, don't quit, and follow your dream.